Hey again, everyone. I am on a roll here talking to you about flash fiction and flash nonfiction that I love and I'm excited about. And I'm going to read, I've got this pulled up on another screen. This is super casual here, folks, if you can't tell. But uh, hopefully the content is not. I'm going to read a piece of flash fiction by Bruce Holland Rogers, whose work is amazing. And you can find a lot of it online, actually, if you want to look him up. This piece is called Riding with Icarus. So I'll read it and then talk a little bit about why I love it. Richardson has been reading Bullfinch's mythology lately. He'd been meaning to get to it for years. The book followed him from college, one apartment to the next. He'd had the book through two jobs, a return to school for his MBA, a failed marriage, promotions, a better marriage, fatherhood, even better promotions and moves from this house to that one to yet another. Only now, after his retirement, after his wife has died, after his first heart surgery, is he actually starting to read. And reading, he's found himself among the immortals. For instance, his golfing partner, Taylor, has a bad day of shanks or long drive straight into the water. By the twelfth green, Taylor's face is red and he shakes his putter with minutes. Periphides, periphides, Richardson thinks, periphides and his iron club. When Richardson gets his prescriptions filled, he notices the dark, scheming gaze of the pharmacist, and he recognizes her. Here is Medea, taking a job where she has ready access to potions. And then there is his grandson. Richardson needs someone to drive him to and from the hospital for tests and procedures, and his daughter-in-law volunteers Luke for the job. Luke isn't happy. To show it, he rides the bumpers of other cars, he corners fast, he punches the accelerator for yellow lights. Apparently, he had other plans for the day, even though his mother had imagined a wide-open schedule. The trip home from the doctor two hours later is the same. Tires squeal, Luke propels the car and lurches between lanes to grab another ten feet of advantage over other drivers. You're going to get us killed, son, Richardson thinks of saying, but doesn't. Just then, he knows his grandson, and he knows that there's no telling him anything. The boy has never listened, not in thousands of years. They are traveling west into the late afternoon glare. Faster, Richardson says. Come on, let's open her up. Let's see what this baby can do. His grandson grins. There is no happiness like this. He laughs. They are both laughing. All right, the boy says, and aims the car into the sun. Here we go. So it's delightful. It doesn't have a bad ending necessarily, although we know, of course, that Icarus rides into the sun. <laughs> um, but sometimes it's hard to find a flash that doesn't have a bit of trauma or higher stakes in it in terms of actual, you know, meat on the page. This is two people having a good time and relating and a grandson and grandfather finding each other. There is the backdrop that and the suggestion that Richardson is ill. A lot of people around him have died. He's thinking about his immortality and reading about the gods. He's got to go take some tests. He can't drive himself but that's in the background. What's in the foreground are those things that make Richardson's reaction to this situation of Luke driving him aggressively and too fast um, uniquely Richardson's own. So how would you react to being driven that way? How would I react? I don't know, but I probably wouldn't pretend that my driver was Icarus. Richardson would. And that's what makes this such a beautiful piece because we get in one or two pages, we get right into that worldview. We know how Richardson is seeing the world right now, and we even have a little bit of a suggestion why. Maybe he's thinking so much about the gods and immortality because his own mortality is coming. He's coming right smack up against it, possibly. So it's a lighthearted story. It's a gentle story, and yet there is this tug in the background about a larger universal, um, deeper issue. That's one of the many 10,000 reasons that I love it. I also like it because it begins with several paragraphs of backstory. I'm looking at the screen here. I hope you all just Google this story and find a version of it for yourself. But the opening two paragraphs really give us a lot of background, which is unusual for Flash. You don't find that many pieces that do it. 
partly because it's hard to pull it off. Like once you get started writing that kind of backstory, it's hard to make yourself stop. But Bruce Holland Rogers is a master at this. He gives us what we need to know in the background. Yes, it takes two paragraphs, but then he reels right on out and he gets us into a scene, right? So uh, that's, a, that's a good technique to try. It's a good thing to model, especially if you're writing nonfiction and you need that two paragraphs of backstory or information so that whatever you have to say next makes sense. Try it. Give yourself two paragraphs. That's it. And then move into scene and see what details you can incorporate to sort of make that worldview turn on a dime and open up to readers so that they know how you see the world or in the case of fiction, your character. What one thing could you shift or what one little tweak could you make that would make this wholly unique? I hope you have fun with that. I hope you enjoyed that story and I'll see you for the next post.